Well, I think this is live. Um, I haven't done a live broadcast in a while, and I am feeling an urge to speak to, uh, well, whoever will listen. Uh, the world is in a pretty interesting phase, isn't it? Uh, there's a lot going on in a lot of different places, uh, and a lot of it is very painful, uh, and a lot of it is very fear-provoking. And we're in a tipping point. Uh, it's been that way for a while, but particularly right now, uh, the balance of power between love and fear is in a major teeter-totter mode. Uh, and we're uh, in a place where we have a choice. And I know it doesn't always feel like this, uh, especially when you get absorbed into the information-seeking, uh, news-reading, TV watching mode. Uh, everybody wants to, to be in the know, to be in the loop. And yet these information systems are not designed to soothe us. They're designed to give us information and it is our choice whether we choose to uh, fixate on it or to tune it out. Uh, and whether you believe it or not, uh, many of us believe that that how we're feeling as, as individuals results in a collective feeling that the earth is experiencing. And regardless of, of what's happening in the world, we're capable of changing how we feel by what we focus upon. And right now, we are very clearly in a, in a place where there's a lot of fear. Uh, and it's a choice now to say, well, it's true, right? That's, I think that's what the, the trap is. Um, it is true, these bad things have happened. Uh, these, obviously, uh, shootings and uh, violent actions all over the world, not just the most recent one that happened Sunday night in Las Vegas. Uh, there's a lot of things that have been occurring when you uh, look back over the past uh, several weeks with, uh, earthquakes and hurricanes and uh, you know, natural disasters of all kinds, uh, it's very easy to fall into the trap of fear. And we can fall into the belief that our fear is somehow a form of love. And it may come off that way. Uh, I know uh, that, that when we consider losing what we love, when we consider uh, the, the loss of safety, uh, the loss of life, that our fear is, uh, is actually love. It's a different form of love. And one could certainly make that case. Uh, but when you consider simply from an emotional standpoint, from a vibrational standpoint, what are you really radiating when you're scared? And I notice when I'm scared, uh, when I let myself fixate on these, uh, these thoughts, these experiences, I'm not radiating love. I'm radiating something very, very different. And the thoughts that occur to me are very, very different as a result of how I'm feeling. And so I want you to take a closer look at how you're feeling and what you're radiating and what it's causing in terms of thought and action, right? What do you do when you're afraid? What do you uh, act like? How compassionate are you? How, uh, how loving are you really? Uh, you know, does it lead you to, to want to buy more firearms? Um, is that really loving? And some would say, well, I love my children, so I want to protect my children. All right. And yet, are you really protecting them from fear? You know, the real root. Uh, and when we get caught up in all of this stuff, and when we're staring at our phones, reading the news loops, uh, as so many people are right now, at this very moment, flipping through their, their news uh, channels and uh, what do you look like to your children right now, right? What do you look like to your loved ones? What do you feel like? What does your voice sound like? And how much are you actually radiating what we're wanting to create in this world? And I understand not everybody's wanting to create love, but we don't have to have 100% do it. We need to have an increasing percentage. And we are... Uh, <laughs> quite possibly at a 50-50 point where if we choose, those who are watching this broadcast and others like it right now, uh, we can make a choice to take a deep breath 
and clear it out. <sighs> Accept the truth of what happened. Accept the truth of what we allowed to happen within us and choose something different, right? To choose love is to act in direct uh, response to our desire for compassion. Are you taking care of yourself? Are you taking care of your loved ones? And, and I don't mean protecting in terms of, you know, saddling everybody up in a tank and, you know, <laughs> and running off uh, into to your bunker. That's, that's not what's going to solve this problem. We know that. What's going to solve this problem is people taking care of people, right? Hugs, playing music together. You know, getting together, I've said it many times, potluck suppers, sing songs in the darkness. This is the answer, right? To, to walk in nature, maybe take your shoes off, right? Walk in a stream. When you tune out of this, uh, the broadcasted human world, if you will, the human world uh, culture that is creating the problem in the first place. We know this, right? The movies, the TV, what, uh, what we get addicted to in terms of our, our Netflix and Hulu uh, binge watching. How much of what we're watching has the rattle of guns, right? What does it make us feel when we're uh, fixated on get the bad guy? whether it's in the news, whether it's watching a program where that is the fundamental basis, good guys versus bad guys, kill the bad guy, now I feel a little bit less worse. Mm. What if we were to, to make a choice to tune this stuff out and if we're going to use our electronics, seek out something that makes us feel better. And then once we start to feel better, get outside and get some sunshine on your face, get some wind on your face, Get some grass between your toes, listen to a stream, sit down on a rock, and hear your inner guidance. Uh, I had a realization just recently, again, it's one that loops for me, that regardless of what's going on in the human world, there is a frequency that is broadcast at all times. And some of us believe it comes from the center of the universe. Not everybody believes that, and it doesn't really matter. But the experience of love, the experience of uh, gentle kindness, uh, the, the warm embrace that we can uh, extend to those we love and then ricochet off of that out to all of humanity. And I understand it's hard to love all of what humanity does. But if we love what humanity is, right, life, consciousness, reaching out towards uh, that isness of humanity. I think that's the beginning. I think that's the beginning of, of the shift uh, that we can sort of reawaken and, and tune out of, uh, from this, this frequency of, you know, of negative thoughts that are caused by our uh, observing of what's going on in order to change it. And I understand there's action steps that need to be taken, but those action steps are not going to happen from a place of fear uh, and, and result in something different than what we have. So what if we were to all just take a moment right now and take the deep breath? Will you do it with me? Take the deep breath all the way in and allow the air and the life force into you and let out everything that you've been hanging on to and forgive yourself for getting scared. Forgive those around you for becoming furious and hateful. Forgive the shooter, shooters, Forgive the war mongers and the money launderers and the governments that are in the process of, of he, up, uh, upheaval. Our society is like the pond in the spring that's turning over and the muck on the bottom is stirring up and it looks 
horrible and ugly, and it is about to become crystal clear. And I know that's hard to see from where we are, but it's, it's happening. It's going to be a very different world, but it has to go through this process. And it no longer uh, is about blaming others and seeing the world as outside of ourselves, right? The world is going to change because each of us takes a closer look at ourselves and our own ugliness and our own fear and the actions that we have taken as a result of getting caught up in our fear. And we're going to say, I forgive myself for allowing fear to take over. I forgive others for letting fear turn into action so that we can move forward. Because if we don't forgive, we continue. And we can't do that anymore. And some will continue. But if we realize that we have no other choice but to love, to love humanity in all its color, in all its languages, in all its cultures, and embrace each other, things are going to change faster. We have a choice between love and fear. And we've always known this, but right now it's happening. It's a choice. And that choice begins with turning off the news, with focusing on nature, focusing on, on love, focusing on, on hugging children, right? playing, singing, dancing, and re-nurturing the feeling that we are losing when we get focused on these truths that are transient. They're the current state. It's the old world bubbling up, clouding our view of love, and then we realize that there's nothing that can cloud our view of love because the emotion is still there always underneath at all times. And when we walk in nature and when we look into each other's eyes with love and compassion, we realize that it never left. So I invite you to join me in this moment of opportunity uh, to choose love. This is a song that uh, it was recently uh, I was guided to listen to it. I'm going to share with you now. Uh, the artist's name is Sean Galloway. Um, and the, art, the artist has written probably a song that is most perfectly titled for what we need right now. Uh, I Choose Love. So, are you choosing love? Are you? Are you choosing love or fear? You do have a choice. We all have a choice. Both states exist at the same time. The storm and the sunlight. The love and the fear. One looks forward, one looks back. We're free to choose. We can. We can rise above. Who choosing love? I choose love. Do you choose love right now? If you do, I thank you. I thank you and I love you.